what the letters CPA mean to me is probably integrity, objectivity, and, and respect. And uh, so what, what I really enjoy is, is giving advice to others and uh, having them appreciate it and hopefully you know it works out for them uh, and, they, and they benefit from it. And usually, you know, they will tell you, and, and it's just something that I really, so the work that I enjoy is just from having that feedback after a job well done. The FCPA aligns with my values because it, it recognizes what people are, people are recognizing you for what you have done for them. And you know, in, in terms of the, you know, the integrity and the objectivity and the sound advice you've given to them, they are now just paying it back to you and saying that, thank you for doing what you've done. I'll never forget this. We were in a plane, it was in the Gobi Desert. Uh, it was January, it was think, I think it was minus 50 outside in the Gobi Desert that day, or minus 40, at least minus 40, maybe minus 50. So we're flying across the desert, and I looked down, because uh, it was, the plane was a prop plane. We were flying to the, from Ulaanbaatar to the mine site. And I looked down, and I saw a single yurt, or as they're called, gares, right? It was the house that the Mongolian indigenous groups lived in, and as I was, Looking outside, there was two elderly individuals, a man and a woman, who were outside. Now, there's no one else around. And they're fussing with certain things outside the gear and the yurt. And all of a sudden, I felt like just, I was, it was an incredible moment because there they were. There was no one else around, and they were surviving out there in the mon in the Gobi Desert. We got to the mine site <laughs> and I went to the yurt to stay for the first time for a few days at the mine site and every morning I'd have a fireman come into my gear to warm the tent because you could not allow the heat to go away because if you did you'd probably freeze at night. Like it was so cold. So that to me was kind of a in the impact of that as we came across the Gobi Desert was pretty astounding. I've been teaching at the post-secondary level for 25 years and I am as enthusiastic today probably more so than I think I was at the beginning of my career because I've always loved learning and one of the things that teaching at Simon Fraser has given me is the opportunity to mix with many students. Early on, I was focused more on the uh, what and the how. And I quickly learned that that really wasn't the most valuable thing that I could perhaps give to my students. Instead, I tried to pivot and think about teaching them why. So why do we do things the way we do? What are the advantages of doing it this way? What are the disadvantages? Because I think if you understand the why, then as the world changes, and certainly uh, over the last sort of 35 years, uh, I've seen huge changes in the accounting profession, not only in the technical side, the how we do it and what we do, but also in the way that we do it and the importance of soft skills and professionalism. So teaching the why, I think, gives students a much better grounding so that as they move forward in their careers and they're going to be facing change, change all the time, they're better prepared to handle that change. And as they move forward in their career and I see their, their progression, uh, I sort of take a little bit of pride in that, that I was there at the beginning. Hard work and perseverance pay off in the long run. Uh, opportunities there if only you're willing to open the door and uh, optimism in the face of adversity is absolutely essential.
The opportunity for me to start a legislative audit office, being the Auditor General of, of Vancouver, was a, a once in a career opportunity. And uh, it was enough for me to come out of retirement to, to come back and do this. Uh, every day I wake up and say to myself, wow, it's not that I have to go to work, it's I get to go to work today. I get to be the Auditor General. I was the board chair of the United Way. Of, well, then it was called the United Way of Greater Victoria. Now it's the United Way of Southern Vancouver Island. When the pandemic hit, and the board was already in the midst of transitioning our fundraising model and our grant distribution model. But then to have COVID come along and have to then move from in-person meetings to doing everything virtual, including our, our granting and, our, and our, um, our fundraising processes, was really daunting. But we managed it, we pivoted it, and through uh, the board's perseverance and through some great executive leadership at United Way, we were able to, to, to do that. We not only um, uh, survived the pandemic, we thrived.